Now we'll be spectating from Matt Gia's side, but either way, this is going to be one heck of a game. We are in our quarterfinals. This is a best of three series, as I just mentioned. Matt Gia, not any new, not a stranger to these quarterfinals, but Cmaz is a newcomer to these tournaments, so I'm very curious how it's going to play out. Oh, and of course, Razi, I remember now he did have that Luma Mastion. We get to see Luma Mastion do a little bit more this time than they did before. And you know, we did forget to ask him if he had, if it was a, a perfect 6 or 7 SV. We'll see if we could get the answer after this game. But Simaz does decide to open up with the Mushuk. I think it's one of the most favorite uh, Temtems to just start, you know, just have that opening for a lot of these players. Mushuk just being all around so, so solid. But Magia going ahead and starting with a pig and Yukama start. So not too bad. You know, I think the pig still has a solid, you know, wind burst onto the Mashuk if you wanted it. And then you got the good turbo play for the next turns. Yeah, I'd like to see what Seamaz does with this Mashuk lead. Whether he wants to attempt for toxic synergy which is what it looks like he's gonna do bringing in the nidrasil and i'm sorry that's not nidrasil that's noxalato <laughs> yeah <What>? noxalato <laughs> i mean still with toxic tem nonetheless so it's toxic pressure going into that yukama so yukama doesn't have any good attacks for that opening turn i think he just wanted to guarantee a solid uh, yukama just in case you know something like two vine or gialis was the opener but Seamass having that counter pick, that's why, you know, the higher seed does get a little bit of the advantage coming into it. Having that counter pick will be countering uh, the Yukama there. And second bans coming in from Mashuk on Matt Gia's side and Whiplump from Seamass's team. And Matt Gia bringing his Mastione and almost baiting Seamass to bring the Luma in as well. And he does. We're going to see Luma Mastion. <laughs> yeah, the battle of these Mastions. We'll see who pulls out ahead. But Magia with the Tuvine and the Nidrasil to round out his team. Who does Magia want to go? He only has Crystal Tem or Crystal Tem. Both of them are looking solid. Tuvine pretty decent against Nidrasil as well. So he is the Tem he's going to be picking up. But just like that, here we go, guys. Quarterfinals is starting. The expected first turn out of Seamaz would be Toxic Synergy over towards the Ukama slot. But knowing that, Machia does swap in Nidrasil, tanking Toxic moves very easily. And the Wind Burst towards Mashuk, starting off the match with almost, oh yeah, a little more than 40% damage. Yeah, and actually. A very nice on Marushio. Yeah, actually a lot more damage than I would have expected. I, I could only predict either the, the Mashuk has a lot less special defense that we're used to seeing. Or this is a, a, a bit of a special attack based pig here. We'll see how these speeds end up going to see if we can get a little bit more info on it. But yeah, Wimber is doing a lot more than we're used to seeing from our regular pigs. But Machia not a regular tamer, so bringing through some spiciness. Seamaz doesn't want to eat another wind burst, bringing Mastion into Mashuk's play. With a nice little bamboozle coming on to Nidrasil, keeping him safe just a little longer. And interesting enough, the Noxalata went with the stairs, so minus defense is what he was trying to do onto the Nidrasil to try to prepare for this Mastion. But yeah, the bamboozle does indeed keep it safe. For the time being, so Nidrasil will be able to get off. Actually, no, it goes for a Toxic Ink onto Masion. Still a solid play. But now the question is, you know, the Pig always being so fast. Definitely faster than both of the Thames on Seamass here. You could just constantly keep bamboozling and keep it, keeping the Nidrasil safe from the Masion. But Masion being slow, so if Seamass wanted a double, you know, something like a Toxic Ink followed by the embers the embers will connect so that's something magia does have to consider 
And the play might just be more stairs, not using too much stamina, and still knocking off the bamboozles. Very true, and we saw how much Wimbers no. did. How much is a tornado gonna do all the way to 21% and the double up? Luma Mastion finds his way out so quickly, but not before the meteor swarm hitting Nidrasil nice and hard down to 44% and taking down the pig, eating the fainted curse. That was so a good way to go. Yeah, very, very good way to go. It was already doomed to that poison, so might as well take out the pig along the way. It does not matter. The fainted curse was pretty much the poison there too. So good exchanges, one for one. You got rid of the pig, so no more bamboozle action for Matt Gia. And I do believe... Okay, so he still has the two vine, but I was about to say, I believe the pig was the only uh, clear, direct uh, answer to the Noxilato and the Mashuk. But two vine is still a good, a good potential answer for sure. Now bringing in Mastione and Tuvine. Certainly Matt Gia has a bit of an advantage this turn, although possible wind hits on the Nidrasil would do a lot of damage. Yeah, and without the pig bamboozle, we could get the good old stare again, minus defense, and then the two vine comes in after that, more than enough to kill it. But you know, a good feather gatling onto Nidrasil. I know Matchia has defense invested into this Nidrasil. So I don't know if it's going to be enough for that 44%, but we're going to find out here. Feather Gatling, is it enough? You no, know oh. it's not. 0.9% <laughs> remaining, and he doesn't double into it. Yes, Ooh, so numbers. big hit. Huge hit. He needed that kill on Ninja but getting the value off, so plus two defense onto that Mastion. But Nidra's still living literally by one or two HP. I put Seamaz in a bit of a tight spot. He probably doesn't want to leave Tuvine in to take any more hits from Mastion. But he doesn't really have anyone in the back that wants to take them either. Kinu would be hit pretty hard. Mushuk is already down 57%. Getting a little bit of ember damage would be rough. Yeah, very rough. And he does need the two vine. We did see the two vine actually outsped everything on the board, so I guess it could just stay in. But if it does stay in, like you said, Rarzi, the Masion's gonna eat it for for lunch there. So we could get it. We could get a Kinu swap just so, to keep the Noxilato even tankier and have that try to be his uh, carry there for the long con. Instead, we see Tornado under Mazdeo doing decent damage, followed by an ink knocking Nitrosil down. But now the Meteor Swarm. Tuvine will not survive this one. Yeah, not survive whatsoever. Will be brought down there. So just the Kinu and the Mashuk, the final Temtems remaining for Seamaz. But Mastion already already pretty low. Can't survive one more toxic ink from this Noxilato. And Noxilato's still around 70%, so not really that low. And we do, do see the Ukama and the Kinu coming in. Giving a nice little protector buff on the Hypnos. That being the first buff for Seamaz's team this match. Yeah, you're right. We're used to seeing Kinu's usually come out a little early, but I guess he couldn't find the perfect time to try to squeeze it in there. But is out now. Protector buff is on the Noxilato, so still super solid. Keeps it a little bit better protected against the two vine there. And he does keep Ukama in. I was almost predicting a two-line swap. But goes for a little bit of damage on the Kinu, followed by the beta burst, bringing Mastion down to 2% remaining. A big hit from Ember. Kinu is almost out of it already. 
Yeah, and I think the idea was just to kind of sack this Mastion here, bringing the two vine with no damage potential coming its way. It's going to be pretty close here. It's just going to be coming down to the Mashuk versus, or sorry, Mashuk Noxalato versus the two vine and the Yukama. Yukama does little to no damage to both of these Thames. Let's see how much it's going to do. That's still solid, solid damage. And Toxic Ink bringing Mastion down. That was a pretty smart play going for Mastion first. He knows that Ukama can't really hit too hard compared to that Mastion at the moment. But now Tuvine and Ukama versus Mushuk and Noxalotl. Yeah, so I think it is very important to take down that Mashuk first is the only thing that's truly countering the two vine, right? Those uppercuts is effective damage. So we could be seeing a double up onto it. But you're absolutely right, Rosie. The Yukama not going to be doing any damage to any of the remaining Thames on CMAS. But we just saw Aquatic Rowan still did a decent 15, 20, 25%. I didn't see it exact. Yeah, I don't think that another one would be enough on its own, but combine that with a Feather Catling, especially towards this Noxalotl. Oh, and the Blizzard instead! That should be enough to knock Mashuk down. He won't be getting back up this match. Yeah, and it was indeed enough, and man, spicy stuff. I was wondering, man, there, Blizzard, you used to be, you know, commonplace in the Yukama move pool, but it kind of got, it kind of uh, fell secondhand to things like the tsunami for that, for that freeze comp combo. But yeah, Blizzard always a good, especially with a lot of toxic Thames in the current meta right now. So Blizzard coming in so clutch there, dealing with the Mashuk. So took care of the Mashuk and got good damage on it. We saw how much it just, uh, the Feather Gatling did on the Noxalato. It does have another Kinu buff now, so could survive. But Team potentially a, a double up. Aquatic Whirlwind taking Kinu down. And now we have to see the Feather Gallion, right? Yeah, let's see if it's enough. No, it's not the Kinu keeping it safe, but it triggered Trance. So plus two special defense. But fortunately for Matt Gia, Tuvine is all physical pressure, so it is going to be going through that trance. And yes, just like that, Matt Gia getting one. There we go. Alright, looks like they are back in it. Let's see if these guys are trying to make some adjustments, particularly for CMAS. The Tuvine did give him troubles late game, so perhaps looking at that, but it does depend on what he is planning on drafting for his team in this game starting things off with the Kinu there I think that's a good start contrasting last game starting to get protector buffs in a little bit earlier very true could be alluding to just the the good old Kinu Gialis start he did ban the Mastion so not necessarily the most not a lot of answers to something like that Usually, to, if he does kind of uh, think that the guy Gialis is coming out, I was about to say, yeah, you comma with either the bird or the ninja, so are some solid starts for Matt Gia, and it is going to be the classic Kinu Gialis for CMAS. You know... It will depend. I haven't seen what item CMAS is running on this Gialis. Most Gialis these days, of course, if they're not running Sweatband like we've been seeing lately, they usually are running Umbrella. So if it is running Umbrella, it should be relatively okay in front of this Yukama here. But still has to be pretty careful. Yeah, especially keeping his friend Kinu closed with Revitalize. It might be enough to keep Giala strong after the first few turns. Yeah, but Kinu as well has to be careful that Nidrasil with a good old Toxic Ink could be in that slot if it does not want to uh, retreat for that following turn. But we will see. We will see what these players want to go with. The Tuvine, as we mentioned, Tuvine gave him some troubles in that late game. If it wasn't for Tuvine, Machia would have not won that end game. 
So CMAS seeing that will decide to ban the two vine for this game too. Nobody goes with Noxalotl instead, allowing Tuvine to come in, challenging Nidrasil without the weakness to Toxic that Whiplump would have. But he takes Whiplump in before Tuvine. Now looking over at that Mishuk. Oh, and it looks like Matt G wants to bring in Toxic as far as he can go. With Volarin and Mushuk finishing up the team. Yeah, that now is three Luma Toxic Mastione. Tems. You're absolutely right. Luma, Mastion, or Tuvine. And he goes with Tuvine, keeping that wind pressure onto all of these Toxic types. And yeah, I think that was the best line to play. The Luma, tu the Luma Mastion is nice, but Tuvine does apply pressure to three of Magia's Tems. So let's see if Seamass, our number one seed coming out of the Swiss, is able to turn things around against Matt Gia. Or is Matt Gia, our number eight seed, going to be taking down Seamass to move forward into the semifinals? Guys, it will be decided here. Actually, not everything decided here. It could be going to game three, but we will see what goes down. This is a classic start, Kinu Gialis. We haven't seen it this tournament, but let's see how it's going to play out for Seamass. Would potentially be a good idea for Seamass to bring out uh, Kinu and put in Mashuk, but he goes to Vine instead, giving some pressure towards Nidrasil early. Ooh, but he does eat the water cannon with the two toxic ticks. Interesting. So maybe reading that and going after Kinu, because water cannon obviously wouldn't be ideal into Kinu. But I guess whatever swapped in. I definitely did expect Water Cannon going into Gialis there, but Spore's not too bad. Add that Poison Tick damage onto the Gialis. Magia might have been expecting the Mushuk coming in instead of Tuvine, and he wouldn't have wanted to put too much Toxic Pressure there. Yeah, so covering both bases, splitting the attacks, but still, Water Cannon onto Mushuk wouldn't have done much damage either, and that Toxic Synergy from the Water Cannon wouldn't got the value with those poison ticks so yeah mashuk was probably the better play but i guess he just wanted to apply that pressure back onto matt gia but aquatic whirlwind going into two vine so close to take it into the poison tick range and he does have umbrella on two vine rather than gialis and oof, the double up from Seamass Crystal Bite followed by the Crystal Plume Gatling from the Two Vine is enough to take care of the Yukama. So well done, one Tem already down for the side of Matt Gia. And has only had to pay the price with his Two Vine. Hasn't been, hasn't been paying the price in terms of HP on the Gialis. Gialis still relatively healthy. It would be nice to see that Tuvine remain healthy as well, though, for Mashuk and Nidrasil. His only other win pressure would be Whiplump named Ukama, who would be very weak to all of the Toxic. So Volarin going into the Tuvine just to guarantee that it goes down. Does the Mashuk want to get a good... Okay, going for the Eurosoul onto the Gialis just guaranteed three ticks of poison. And it looks like we did miss it earlier. Gialis snared Nidrasil. So Nidrasil no longer holding any items. Yeah, whether it was an energy drink, whether it was a coat, no longer available. I did see that. I did see that. I just didn't see what item the Nidrasil did. But still, spicy stuff coming out from Seamass to have the snare on the Gialis. So, pretty cool, pretty cool decision for Seamass. Probably catching a lot of people off guard with that.
holding his whip lump out against Mushuk and Volarend. A noxious bomb could do a lot of damage here. Although no, Volarend is aerobic, he possibly doesn't have noxious bomb with him. Yeah, I've only seen a couple of aerobic birds with Noxious Bomb, but not too many. You're absolutely right. So a good old Tornado from the Wimplump, I believe. No, no, it just came out, so Tornado is not online for it. So yeah, Mashook not too pressured. Gialis is running out of stamina, so potentially looking at a switch out there into something like a, a, a Mashook could be good. Kinu could be solid just to get a buff onto the, to the Wimplump. like he brings Whiplum back instead, putting Kinu in its place to buff up Gialis. Oh, and the Volarin does have a Noxious Bomb, hitting Kinu pretty hard, taking him down to about half health. But the Crystal Bite towards an aerobic Volarin, that is good night. Yeah, it did cause him to overexert quite heavily there. I do think enough for those two ticks of poisons. However, Kinu is here and Kinu does have Revitalize, so it could be enough to keep it from going down this turn. But then you're not going to be able to do anything with Gialis, right? Because it did overexert. So that kill did come at quite the price, but you still guaranteed the kill on that Aerobic Bird. So still a good exchange for CMAS. Forging low for CMAS, I do believe the Kinu should be able to outspeed both the Mushuk and the Ninja Soul. No one is up on any speed on any board here. So Kinu can get a clean revitalize, but now you leave it, you know, you, you anticipate the revitalize on Gialas. And Magia could simply go, you know, uppercut followed by um, a toxic, well maybe not toxic ink, maybe Spores does a little bit more. That could be enough to still take it down, followed by that tick of poison. I wouldn't mind seeing an allergic spread either, putting toxic ticks onto both spots. But now with Mashuk, toxic ticks wouldn't be effective. But he does perfect jab, bringing Gialis down to 2%. And the toxic gank into Mashuk, so that was a very nice read. So yeah, Gialis will be going down from the Poison Tick. So down it goes, so really good kill there for the side of Machia. Anytime you could take down a Gialis, especially a Gialis with two Protector buffs, is a feels good moment. So well done there, got rid of a big, big threat on the side of CMAS. Even though you're down one temp, actually it's tied, right? Those three temps to three temps, virtually the same advantage in terms of HP but Kinu of course relatively low but Kinu still has all that value to give with that protector buff and it looks like they're both Ooh. doubling in the turn good damage on the Whiplum And yeah, the Wimplump didn't stay in, so Wimplump still with no Tornado online. And now, you know, Tornado is online, but it's a little too late. The damage has been done. Three ticks of poison remaining. So we'll be going down, not yet by the poison. It's missing literally like 0.2%. But that means any attack, any 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 attack from either of Machia's Thames should easily be enough to clean up the Wimplump. So now he's just worried about Kinu in the back and the Mashuk. I think Machi is sitting pretty comfortable here. I'm not too sure there's a way to let this one go from Machia's perspective. Yeah, it looks like all Seamaz really has to hold on to now is a Kinu buff likely coming onto Mashuk soon with Pig coming back out in a turbo choreography. We do see Tornado towards Mushuk though. This will be nice damage, bringing Mushuk down 50%, followed by the perfect jab, making him a little bit squishier. And yeah, the Mushuk going with the turbo leaves the Wimplump, able to go off one more time. 
but right now he only has things like a cold breeze, sharp rain, tsunami, so not truly effective damage to either of these Thames. Unless of course Seamass does run Blizzard, we have seen some Wimplumps with the Blizzard. So we can't, we can't count that out completely, but a simple Wimbers will be outspeeding all the Thames and taking down the Wimplump. Yeah, playing it safe with that wind burst, not letting Whiplump do any more damage. So it looks like we find ourselves with the final two Temtems remaining for Seamaz. We saw how much damage that Pikapek was doing with just the wind burst onto the Mashuk. So I do think the pig should be able to carry Machia to victory. Let's see how much this tornado is going to do. Decent, nice around, nice damage around that 40%, I believe. Yeah, the protector buffs kept Luffy just a little bit tankier. Now, I didn't see what the Kinu did. Rarzi, did you catch what Kinu did on the side of Seamass? I did not, no. <laughs>